Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at differentiating the displacement and the velocity so we can answer questions from exercise 11b. So here's kind of given the way the game of the video really. Uh, we're differentiating the displacement to get the velocity and we're differentiating the velocity to get the displacement. So we've got a little diagram here that looks something like this. We've got differentiate displacement to get velocity and we can differentiate velocity to get acceleration. Now we can think about it here, velocity is the rate of which displacement changes over time. If you think about it, if you've got some velocity then your, your displacement, your distance from your starting point is changing as time goes on. And if you have acceleration then the amount of your velocity is increasing or decreasing over a certain time period. So that's what it means to differentiate um, displacement and differentiate velocity here. Now remember we had all of our displacement and velocities in terms of t, so we're going to be doing a lot of differentiating with respect to t, um, and that's how we're going to get velocity and that's how we're going to get acceleration as well. We can answer certain problems to do with this as well. And you can also reverse it as well, so you can come back up that chain as well of dVa and integrate. Okay, so it's sometimes easy to, to think of it as x, v, a, where you differentiate to go down and you integrate to come back up. Just like that. Okay, x here. Now, the reason we don't really use s anymore is just to make a difference um, and to make it clear that we're not now using s from suvat, we're using x from displacement um, when we're differentiating. Alright then, so uh, let's have a go at a question here then and see how it can be used uh, in context. So a particle p is moving along the x-axis at time t seconds, the displacement x is given by this formula here. And the questions are, find the speed of p when t equals 3 and find the value of t for which p is instantaneously at rest. So this here is our displacement formula and if we want to find the speed of p when t equals 3 then we differentiate to find velocity. So differentiate to find velocity and remember we times the front by the number and reduce the power by 1. So 4t cubed uh, and then when it's minus 32t then it's just minus 32 and remember the number disappears. We can also write here that this is v equals 4t cubed minus 32. So finding the speed of p when t equals 3, we just substitute in 3. And we get 76. <coughs> for part b here, the value of t for which it's instantaneously at rest, well if you're looking for this particle to be at rest here, you're looking for its velocity to equal 0. So we set the velocity equal to 0 and solve to work out what t needs to be. t needs to either be uh, 2. Okay, so when t equals 2, it's instantaneously at rest. Part c is find the magnitude of acceleration when t equals 1.5. So we've got velocity, let's differentiate it again to get acceleration. So we'll get 12t squared, and plug in t equals 1.5, and that will give us... 27. So it's 27 meters per second squared is the acceleration when t equals 1.5. Alright, and so classic example there, that's what you need to be doing for these two questions here and the rest of the exercise. Pause the video and try these two out then. Alright then, so well done for having a go at this then. So, part A, we start off with x equals 2t cubed minus 8t, and we're looking for the velocity when t equals 3. So differentiate it to get velocity, and substitute in t equals 3. So we're going to get 9 times 6 is 54, minus your 8 will give you uh, 46. So 46 meters per second. The next part here is find the acceleration of the particle when t equals 2. Well, let's differentiate it again. So we're at this step here for velocity. 
let's differentiate this again. So we're going to get 12t. And we want to find the acceleration when t equals 2. So it's just going to be 24 meters per second squared. OK, so there we are. That's, that's how we do that one. Part, question 3, uh, particle p is moving along the x-axis. t is greater than 0. Um, the velocity is represented by this expression here. Find the acceleration of p when p is instantaneously at rest. Okay, so two parts to this one here. When p is instantaneously at rest means v needs to equal 0. So we're going to get 0 equals t squared plus t minus 12. Now I've just switched all this around and moved it to the other side in one big step there. Um, so now factorise, we're going to get t uh, plus 4t minus 3 which means we only get one solution here, which is t equals 3, given that t is greater than 0. Now what we do is we find the acceleration of our system here when um, t equals 3. So differentiating our velocity here is so we get minus 1 minus 2t. So substituting in t equals 3, and we get minus 1, minus 6, which will give us minus 7 metres per second squared. Whoops, metres per second squared. OK then, so that's, uh, that's how we answer question 3 then. So carry on with the rest of this exercise. Move on to the more difficult ones. Persevere through those uh, challenging questions. And if you get stuck, ask your teacher for help. Thanks very much for watching.